We've got to get serious about our training today. This jumping and biting is one of the main reasons that Moira's had a difficult time getting adopted. These habits must go. This is Moira and I'm Zach George. Moira the German Shepherd Dog is looking for a home and I've only got two weeks to teach her how to behave so that someone will be willing to adopt her. Okay, we have a situation. And as you can see, it's not going to be easy. She jumps excessively, lunges at almost any distraction. Moira loves to bark and she definitely pulls on leash and uses her teeth to interact with the world a little too inappropriately. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. If that was a dog, she would be like, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to that. I will train this dog. Look at this loose leash right now. Shake. Yes, much better. Yes. Look at me. Is she getting trained? This is reality dog training. As promised, we've got to make up some serious ground here because we are eight days into our two week training process. Do you know we could not find a full bag of pup for treats anywhere in my house? Which is crazy because we get them for free and I get them shipped to me all the time. Pup for treats do not go unused in my house. Look at the sweet potato treats. I like using them to get a dog to go into a crate voluntarily, so I'll take a small handful and just toss them in there. To mix things up, throwing in freeze dried salmon sometimes can be really effective in my training because these are just straight up freeze dried meat. When you're serious, about training, you want to have those high value currencies on standby everywhere. If you decide to check out Pupford Treats, use my link, I'll have it below in the description. I just love this dog and how awesome her personality is, but holy cow, this biting. We really need to get this play biting under control. I mean, seriously, this is a huge problem with adult rescue dogs. It's leftover puppy biting, but since they didn't have a traditional family to raise them during those first few months of life, they have to understand that they can't interact with the world with their mouth in the way that they might want to. And like we've established before, dogs use their mouth like this because that's how they grab things. I mean, they don't have hands like we do, so we have to show them how to behave. Stopping play biting 101 is about redirecting your dog's attention onto a treat or a toy as we've done many times in the past, but there's more to stopping play biting than just that. So today, rather than focusing on redirection constantly, I want to kind of teach her a little bit about bite inhibition. She does love being pet. Uh, but as we just saw, you can't pet her without her going a little crazy. So that is the thing that I really want to address, her pursuing a human hand with her mouth open. With adult play biting, sometimes it can take a little bit longer because it's more habitualized. They've been doing it for a longer period of time. So it can take a minute, be patient with them. I'm also hoping to desensitize her to the human touch so that she doesn't feel the need to just say, hey, let go of me every time I grab her harness or something. Sit, nice, uh, see that? Sit. And granted, you shouldn't rush up to a dog to do that, but doesn't mean it won't happen from time to time. And teeth on human flesh from a dog that looks like this can very easily get misinterpreted by a lot of people. So I'm gonna break out the chicken here, number one, just to get her in food mode. When dogs are in food mode, they're a little less bitey. They tend to be a little more licky. So I'm gonna use some treats here and look how good her behavior becomes when these treats are out. That's really a good start. Good girl. Now we're not gonna have to use treats all the time. This is just to motivate her in the short term to understand what we're looking for here. Sit, lie down. Good girl. Hey, that lie down's looking great. That's something she didn't do when she first came here. Very good, so I'm gonna, yes, very good. I wanna be able to touch her right here under her chin without her being chompy. Good girl, that's a good start. Yes, I love the lick. That's what I'm looking for. Like anytime she's licking where she was otherwise biting, I'm gonna reinforce that. Say a three-year-old comes up to her head. Uh-uh, yes, I like the licking. That's what I wanna see. Yes, good girl. And dogs don't like being pet in the way that I'm doing here, but she still needs to be very tolerant of that no matter what. So I'm just trying to get her comfortable in short bursts of aggressive human touching. Cause that really is what gets her going. When you start roughhousing with her or petting her vigorously, she can get real bitey. Sit, yes. Just giving her very small treats. Yes, very good. What happens if I grab her foot? Yeah, I'd rather you give me your foot. Here, she knows shake, we've taught her that. Good, she, do you see the licking? She's starting to get the picture, but it's hard for her to resist the biting. Let me see if I can get her on her back for a belly rub. Yes. Good girl. See, look, that, look at the, all this licking that's happening. There's still a little bit of biting there, but it's starting to shift towards licking. 
And I've got her on her back here because I've noticed this is when she tends to get the most playful. Let me touch these feet. This is actually quite relevant right now because I'm gonna be trimming her nails, hopefully successfully in a moment. That's why I wanted to do this exercise first so she doesn't become bitey. But look how I'm able to like touch her feet. Right now I'm kind of distracting her with the treats just to make sure she's really into it. But now let's do it separately. Yep, that was a lick as well. She addressed my hand, but she didn't put teeth on my hand. That's really what I'm going for here. Yes, I love the licking. And so this is just kind of an example how a very quick training session might look when you're trying to address the biting in those first few weeks of having a dog, whether they're an adult or a puppy or whatever. This doesn't get resolved in one training session. This is something I'm gonna do with her over the next week and hopefully we'll cut way back on it. And of course, as a reminder, it's okay for your dog to bite with permission too, right? So she loves playing with plush toys like this and that gives her a satisfaction of biting. So it's okay for dogs to bite only with permission and in certain ways. Do you see what I mean? Let's just do a quick check-in on her let go. I'm so proud of her let go. Let go. Yes, good girl. So, super proud of that, good. Teaching Moira how to conduct herself with her teeth is super important, but also important is her impulse control, especially with a dog with some serious play drive like Moira. I wanna to continue to surprise her with artificial distractions regularly. I'm also trying to keep her pretty sharp with her surprise stays. Stay. That is, stay on short notice when she's really excited. Okay, you can do it. Okay. Sometimes she's a little confused on okay. Oh wow, it even landed in the crate. Love that she went in the crate to get it. This is the kind of thing you just do all the time with a dog in many different ways. Stay. And then, okay, come. Getting her to come to me. Gonna give her a treat for that, yes. At some point in the future, I'm hoping to make her recall a little more advanced by having her come right past something that she's distracted by to me. But if there's something that she likes and it's between me and her, she's very likely to choose the thing. I mean, yesterday I worked on calling her away from a distraction, which also has its whole host of benefits. But I still want her to come to me, even if she's gotta pass something that's an inch away from her, between her and me. Stay. Okay, come. Hmm, not quite. See, it's hard for her. She's like, I'm gonna pick up this thing that I like on the way. But we don't want that. That's a distraction. Lekka. Sit. Stay. Okay, come. Yes, trying to lean her away from the distraction. The problem seems to be when it's like directly in her path. If I have it slightly off to the side, it's a little bit easier for her. But I want a cat to be able to run right in between us and her come to me instead. Okay, clearly we're far away from that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. She's like, I'll just go get another one. So this is a nice distraction. I like this one. She's into it, look at that. Moira is even more intense about this toy, which means she wants it even more than the last one. And it would be really nice to be able to call her attention off something like that that she's really excited about as we continue to work up to getting her attention off of dogs Sit. in the future. Stay. So basically we're trying to get her to come to me while drawing on that leave it experience she's had in the past in a few different contexts. Okay, come. Ah. Sit. Stay. Okay, yeah, ah. You can see this is extremely hard for her. We're having a tough time right now. I thought I'd be able to get through to her on this. Let me make it a little bit easier for her. Stay. Uh-uh. Here, like, she's into that. Look at me. Okay, come, I'm gonna do it at real short range right here. All right, so by getting a little bit closer to her, she's more likely to listen to me. That supports the hypothesis of the small training bubble. So that is the closer you are to your dog, the more likely they are to listen to you at first. Let's give this a shot again. Look at me. Okay, come, ah. come. yes. Much better, that's so good. It seems when I really break it down for her and I make it extra easy, she's much more likely to listen to me. Let me see if I can get a couple of successes here. Sit, stay. Okay, come. Yes. Just using different body language there, very obviously showing her that I wanted to come in this direction, slightly away. I mean, it makes a difference. Stay. Okay, come. Much better. All right, so we've got some work to do there, but she's starting to do better with 
coming to me when there's a distraction between us. I wanna set expectations and make it clear that teaching your dog to come and stay with heavy distractions in a variety of contexts is something you focus on for the first two years you have them. The idea is that you get 80% there in pretty short order, and then it's that last 20% where they're thrown wild cards in various situations that you have to really make sure they're prepared for. And we do that by having them on lead, controlling their environment, and making sure they're not in a position to get away from us. That's why we're always practicing different settings and situations. It's time to give Moira a quick break, so I wanna give you guys a quick update on how Moira has been doing when I leave her alone. You'll remember that we've been working on Moira's separation anxiety, and so far that anxiety seems to be limited to crate anxiety. So I've been leaving her alone in a larger enclosed area that has an open crate in there. That seems to be helping her stress levels remain low while also desensitizing her to being alone. Let me show you what I do that's been making the process a little bit easier. I've got some kibble here. And so I'll just pour like a quarter cup, kind of just on the floor there, just to get her focused on being comfortable in here. She's come to look forward to this part of the day. So she's pretty preoccupied there. Then I'll keep an eye on her. I've got a couple of cameras in there. We'll see how she does. This might be one of my favorite devices on earth. If you're looking for an excellent dog camera that also allows you to give your dog treats, then you need a Furbo. It's super advanced. It has tons of smart alerts, like barking alerts and even safety alerts. So it keeps you updated on how your dog is doing, even when you're not actively looking at them on your phone. I'll have a link in the description where you can check out Furbo Dog Camera. By the way, Pupford treats fit perfectly in here. Moira jumped on me this morning and I was noticing how long her nails were. And we're gonna talk more about jumping later, but getting your dog comfortable with basic things like a nail Dremel can be very important if this is how you choose to maintain their nails. There's a motorized sound in here. It can be a little ticklish or off-putting to them. So I'm hoping to introduce her to this right now. Very good. See, I'm just letting her smell it. See that? Yes. So I'm gonna show it to her. Give her some chick, oh, she's so, she, so far she obviously likes it, maybe a little too much. I'm gonna turn it on real quick, just for a sec. Stay. Ah, here, <laughs> sit, no. Okay, a lot of dogs get really frightened over that. Moira so far is very intrigued by it. Why am I not surprised? Come here girl, sit, stay, leave it. Uh-uh, leave it, nope, leave it alone. Yes. With her, it seems pretty effective to have some treats right here. Easy. I like that she's licking, not biting too hard. Yes. So here I can have it on high. She's still interested in the treats. Whoa, easy. You remember a lie down. Let me see if I can put her into a more stable position here. Good girl. Yes, good. I, <laughs> I like that she's not scared by it. Remember shake? Shake. Yes. See here, now I'm gonna to touch it to her nail. Leave it alone, leave it. Lie down. Yes. Uh-uh, leave it. All right, I need to take a step, step back here. We have to work on leave it. Leave it, yes. Here, look at me. Yes. Leave it alone. Look at me. Yes. Leave it alone. Here, look at me. Yes. Come. Yes. Very good. I mean, just connecting the dots here. Stay. Yes. Good girl. Leave it. Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Sit. She did not like that at all. So I'm gonna stop right there because I think we're gonna make it worse. I barely touched her with it. I thought she was at that point because she was leaving it alone. She was behaving acceptably while it was off. I mean, who knows what her background is on this, but clearly she has a ways to go on the Dremel. So I'm gonna hold off on that for now. And these are the critical moments. I mean, when you see that your dog has gone too far with something, give them a break, take a step back and reevaluate. So that's what I'll be doing with the Dremel. What I don't wanna do is force my way through and neither should you because you don't want to make an issue that's potentially bad even worse. So I'm gonna introduce her to these instead, some more traditional nail clippers. Come here, girl. And we'll see how she does. Hopefully this will go a little more smooth. See this, you wanna smell these? She's like, whatever. <laughs> Good. Good, 
touching our nails here. Notice I'm letting her nibble on the chicken a little bit here too. Good, sit, shake. Good, nice. All right, her foot's a little bit sensitive. Let me try something else to make this even lower stress for her. We have this mat here from Pupford, which is really great for things like this. I'm hoping this might help us. There's some peanut butter spread out. You see all these grooves, so it makes it last a longer time. So hopefully this will get her a little more at ease with having her nails trimmed. So far, she's doing really well. And since she is so focused on this peanut butter, I think I'm just gonna take my chances and dive into it here. So here we're counter conditioning her, like getting her to be more tolerant of something that she typically isn't. And she's getting a good experience of eating that peanut butter at the same time. And she's like, hey, I don't mind this so much. So we'll cater our approach to her. You're doing so great, yes. Her back ones look pretty short, actually, so I think we're okay there. But really good first nail trimming experience for her. Some dogs are gonna be more comfortable with certain approaches versus others. I mean, that's the lesson we've learned here, right? The Dremel, too overwhelming for her. But the traditional nail clippers, she was fine with those. So we'll take it. Good job, girl. I'll have a link to the Pupford lick mats in the description. We got a dog right out here. Okay, we got to jump into a secondary training session. She's dog reactive, but I'm in a golden opportunity here to make some progress on this because I'm inside, the dog is outside. She's likely not gonna be as stimulated as if we were on a walk. So it's kind of an in-between session where I might be able to get a victory. Let me see if I can get her to come to me when I call her while that dog is out there. That would be huge. Moira, here. Yes, good. Sit, yes. Okay, you wanna go look? Let's look. I don't want her totally repressing her desire to check out the dog. Okay, Moira, come. Yeah, good girl, nice job. Okay, good. Good? Moira, come. Yes. That's a good example of a secondary training session where you just have to snap into training mode. Okay. Um, and really address the issue. So right there, I saw it was a great opportunity to practice a strong recall in the presence of a dog, albeit, a lot easier for her. See, we're in here right now. If we were outside inches away from the dog, it wouldn't have been as easy. But you have to get it right here before you can get it right out there. This is a good example of being consistent and you wanna do this wherever possible. And just as a reminder, we don't wanna rely on training sessions like this to completely train our dog. These are just supplementary. We still have to go out of our way to do training sessions in the presence of dogs in the distance, much like we did just yesterday with Moira, but that's very good. She is getting smarter exponentially by the day. As far as her jumping goes, that's something we really wanna get under control. She's doing really well with me because we've been working together a lot. And right now she's pretty into the training session, but you saw just a moment ago, she was really excited. Right now I'm giving her a treat to really reinforce the calm behavior. So I like that a lot. I mean, if you think about it, at its simplest, teaching a dog not to jump on you is just getting them to sit and stay when they're excited, right? I've done a number of those drills with her throughout this last week or so. But when she sees someone new, it's a little bit more tempting. And you might remember that Brianna's mom was over here pretty recently and Moira was just a little too out of control for my liking. She's coming over in a little bit. I'm hoping we can use her as a real life training distraction. This is something that most of you can do as well. If you've got a friend of the family or a relative or anyone who can come over to help you with teaching your dog not to jump on other people. That's always nice. I'm hoping to make some progress with her on that. Teaching her how to sit and stay when genuinely excited by someone other than me. I have two main tips. Number one, exercise your dog literally just before they come over. Do you want your dog tired and preferably panting as your guest walks up to the door? So they've had some recent fulfillment. Secondly, have your dog restrained or on leash so that you can easily manage them if they are a little too out of control. So I'll be doing that with her as well as we go through this jumping lesson. The goal is going to be to have Bree's mom, my mother-in-law, pet her without getting jumped on. You think you can do this? I'm not really sure how this is gonna go. I don't know if this is a good idea. Moira, please be nice to her. I really need her to like me, okay? There's chicken in it for you if you do well. Okay, come on in, Deb. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. You wanna go say hi? Let's go say hi. Good. Okay, so right there, that's why we have them on leash. And see, is Deb a pro or what? She knows exactly what to do. It's as though we've known each other for almost a decade. <laughs> Good girl, back here. So I'm gonna actually back off a little with her and you can step back maybe just a little bit. Very good. Good girl. But you can see her 
desire here is to immediately jump and greet her at the face. You're a big scary German shepherd though, you can't do that. But the bottom line here is that they are going to get the attention they want as long as they keep all four paws on the ground. And if they jump, then whatever it is they want, whether it's treats, the other person, a toy or anything, that goes away. That's how we provide an unpleasant consequence to undesired behavior. But we don't have to be overly harsh about it. That's usually good enough. All right, so why don't you try and come in slowly to, to pet her under the chin, and if she looks like she's about to jump, just back off. Yes, I'm gonna just go ahead and reward because she's not jumping yet. Yes, good, yes, good. I'm trying to prevent the jumping, yes, from happening, and this is really good. Look, loose leash, let's quit while we're ahead. I'm gonna have you back away now. Yes, good girl. Even got a down there, but you can see how delicate that stay is in that situation. I'm having to keep that treat right in her face. But let's see if we can improve that a little bit. Having fun so far? Yeah. Doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Stay, okay. If you wanna say hi, we say hi gently. Yes. And Moira, okay, come. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. This time before she starts jumping, I'm gonna call her away. So she has some experience of being called away from something exciting. Say hi. Hey little girl. Good girl. girl. Okay, come. See that? So we're interrupting the behavior before it occurs. When you have company coming over, if you don't feel like going through all this, have your dog in another room and then bring your dog out once everyone is settled and say, look, I need like five minutes to train my dog and see if you can get someone to help you out like this. But if your attention is divided, then you can't really hope to train a dog. <laughs> Even better, I'll take this behavior all day long. So here she is flopping on her back. Hey, sweetie. Yes. If you have a willing guest who's willing to help you, then they might be able to achieve some results as well. But I wanna make sure that you know how to deal with this because ultimately it's your responsibility, your dog, to keep them in a sit stay. Stay. Yes. Stay. Yes. Yes. So there, I was able to yes. reward a little less frequently yes. than the first time where I had to be constantly there, but still yes. pretty rapid, just to get the point across. Yes. yes. Sit. Stay. Don't jump. Yes. That's very I'm nice. Good. You're Stay. You're a good girl. <laughs> You're being such a good girl. Yes, you can Look see it in her you. eyes. I She's know. like, I want to jump, but I really also want that treat right there. If you've got an exuberant jumper, this is exactly why you want to have them on leash. I know it's weird having your dog on leash inside the house, but it's even weirder to have your dog tackling your guests. What you'll find with most dogs is they will eventually settle down after just 10, 20 minutes tops. So if you can just kind of be on them and teach them for that first few minutes, there's a very good likelihood that they're gonna chill. It's just that real initial greeting when most dogs meet other people where they just lose their mind. So try to avoid having your dog up in a room too long. Give them the opportunity to experience being around people where possible if they tend to be excessive jumpers. I've got her in a real stable down stay here. Let's see how stable it is. I'm giving her little treats here just to encourage the duration. Again, by being low to the ground, we're discouraging jumping. Stay. And so look at that. And this is great, Good. but I'd still like Moira to be able to sit politely while being greeted while Deb stands. Yes, nice job. And so, very good, I'd say a lot of progress here. Nice job, Moira. Good girl, that's how we greet people. That's how we interact with them, by not jumping. You're such a good girl. Stay, a little more exuberantly. You're such a good girl. Yes. Oh, I love you, baby. You're such a sweet. Moira's sweet. not only sitting politely, but she's also not play biting either. And those are two things she definitely would have been doing just a few hours ago. Okay, come on. I'm gonna quit while we're ahead there to make sure we end on that successful moment. Because training dogs is all about getting those minor moments at first and then building on those. This is her first formal training session on not jumping on other people outside of me. So I think she did pretty well. We'll continue working on this. Clearly this isn't something that happens in one training session, but this is what you do over and over and over until your dog starts to realize, oh, okay, I guess these are the rules. Thumbs up for Deb. Check out Pupford's exceptional training treats and Furbo Dog Camera too. Subscribe to my channel, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and even Facebook. Get a copy of both of my books too. I'm gonna have all of the links to everything we talked about in the description below. We'll see you in, oh my gosh, 
Is it actually time for episode eight? We still have so much to do. I gotta go.